Hello there, friends. Today is 1-13-2022, and today is Odin Project Vlog Day 38. And uh, today uh, we worked on the I'm 71% complete in foundations, and I was able to get through um, fundamental fundamentals part three. Um, I wasn't able to complete it last night, so there was no upload. So um, it goes into uh, so I got finished today, um, and we went through functions, and basically it's all about functions. Uh, there's a couple learning outcomes. Again, I'm not going to read these articles. Um, they all need to be read and understood and consumed. Um, but they're, they're lengthy. Uh, but they're good. Uh, please don't skip any content. All this stuff's needed for um, extra learning and sminting in those concepts. So here's a, a definition of a function call. A very basic one um, and it talks about the placeholder value future values talks about you know that they call they call this um, animal is called a parameter down here when you pass it in this is called a call and then the goat is called the argument if I remember right um, comment in the leave a comment on the video if I'm incorrect I may have those flipped um, Anyway, during today, I'll try to do my best to use correct terminology, but um, sometimes I get it wrong because I'm just um, nervous and say it wrong, <laughs> and other times I get it wrong because I actually don't know. So um, just being real with you. So there are lots of good articles in here, and then it comes down to practice. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's just get into the practice here. So let's set, write some functions. Write these in the script tag of a of the skeleton HTML file. If you forgot how to set this up, review the instructions in Fundamental Part 1. And they went over that. And we've already done that, too, um, in our first video uh, of this section. But for, uh, for now, just write each function and test the output in council.log. So they give you four different exercises. Okay, so this is the first time. It's going to sound kind of dumb here, but this is the first time. I went to, um, I hit up the um, the Discord group because I had a question. And my question was simply, hey, I don't want the answers to these, but I'd like to know where the solutions are because as you can see here, there's no solutions to these problems. I'd like to know where the solutions are at so I can compare my code to make sure that I'm understanding the material. And I got a reply back almost instantly. It was great. If you guys haven't used the Discord group, you really need to be using it. Anyway, they got back to me and within like five minutes basically said, confirmed what my suspicion that there was no solutions for these to look at. And you basically just work through them until they work, basically, until they give you the result that you're, you're looking for. Um, I guess they're kind of self-explanatory, but I was just wanting solutions that were like, you know, verbatim, uh, you know. The syntax verbatim but um, wasn't gonna get that so I left it at that and I said thank you and started working so one of the first things I realized was I after all this reading of course there's a lot of knowledge that's, that's poured on you I needed to go back to the basics of what syntax looks like in a definition so I brought up this article which is one of the first articles you read and I just needed to know like where the brackets went and I couldn't remember if there was semicolons at the end of stuff so there isn't on the function call line but there or creation line but there is on the in in every single line inside the curly brackets so there's a semicolon there and of course outside of it and then if you have a return statement which isn't on these but return statements also get semicolons and then I thought there was a semicolon after the end bracket of the function, but there is not, as you see. So just something I want to run over with you. So without further ado, let's hit the editor. <coughs> so here, um, what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to go through each. Um, I'm going to go through each exercise with you one by one, and I'm going to uncomment my code, and we'll run it to make sure it's right. Um, 
I I did I did also have to look up the. You can see I did a lot of googling today. Uh, VS Code shortcut key to comment out code. So for some reason this doesn't always work. I wonder if it's just because the virtual box is not capturing all my keystrokes. But if you hit Control K C, your con your code. You, if you highlight it and hit do that shortcut key. Your code, your highlighted code, should be commented out. It's fast. It's really nice instead of having to comment each line out. And then if you highlight it and hit, uh, you can, I know you can't see my keyboard, but hit Control C or Control K U. Uh, maybe not. It's supposed to uncomment it. Do the opposite so we can run the sucker. Control K U. Okay. <laughs> Control K U. And that didn't work. What in the world? Hang tight, guys. Part of doing this live is stuff comes up. Okay, so for some reason that brought up my... You know, man, I really messed this up. Ha! <laughs> uh, brought up a command terminal. That's weird. Okay. All right, we'll figure this out. Okay, there we go. So if you hit Control S, that saves it. And so what happens here is the first one, it says um, write a function called add seven that <clears throat> takes one number and returns that number plus seven. So simply what we're doing here is we're creating a function called add seven and we're passing in a parameter called add number. <clears throat> add number, this probably doesn't need to be this verbose, but I'm trying to get in an early habit of writing clean code um, and cl code that's, you know, and I refer to clean code as code that's easy to read, not necessarily the shortest code. There's definitely a, you know, you could use, uh, as we learned in the text, you could use, you know, uh, question mark, uh, proceed, uh, I think they call that um, de uh, function expressions that are shorter or question marks and equal sign uh, greater than there's a d bunch of different ways to do it instead of using curly brackets but I like this linear approach because we've been doing this all throughout and also probably a little a little overkill to uh, create variables inside but I learned we learned um, in one of the articles that said get in a good practice of which I didn't do it here but you'll see it down here we get the other examples but don't reuse your variables like once you need to make a good name for your variable and make it only use it once so don't don't reuse it this makes sense here because we're just iterating over the same and we're not we're not looping we're just iterating once so add number no big deal but do, normally you only want to use your variable once for it to mean once mean one thing and do one thing once and you know add number is a pretty descriptive but you want to be descriptive too so with that said what this does is it, it it creates a variable called add number, which just iterates over the current add number. And then in parentheses, I have add number plus seven. So what it's going to do is it's going to count when I do council out log, it's going to call the add seven function and at pass the argument of four into add number. So then add number will come down here and it'll be four plus seven return add number, which will return that um, to the council. So if you run it, we should get four plus seven, which is 11. And we do. So there you go. That's how you do that one. So now I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. Should be able to do Control K C. There we go. And I'm going to try to uncomment the next one. Control K U. There we go. Perfect. Control S to save. Now let's go over this one. This says write a function called multiply and take two numbers and return their product. So product is multiplication, if you recall. So what we're doing here, we're creating a function called multiply. We have two two uh, parameters we're inputting, num1 and num2. And um, we're creating an iteration again, a uh, variable called multiply, which is num1 times num2, return, return multiply. And then we're going to call multiply. Again, I probably shouldn't have use that variable name because that's the same name as the function but um, 
what it's going to do is, do is it's going to uh, take 4 and 2 as arguments and pass them into 4 will be num1 and 2 will be num2. And they will be multiplied together here. 4 times 2 is 8. And that will become that will be uh, the value added to the multiply function. Return multiply and log it out. So we should get 8. And we do. So there's that one. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and uh, comment this sucker out. Control K C. Nope. Let's try it again. If you guys know if I'm doing something wrong or incorrectly, put it in the comments. What? Control K C. It's like hit or miss whether it works. I don't know what the deal with that is. Uh, I did that three times. Uh, next one, write a function called capitalize. This one I spent a, quite a bit of time on actually. Um, that takes a string and returns that string with only the first letter capitalized. Be sure that it can take strings that are lowercase, uppercase, or combination. So there's a lot going on there. So here is what I did. Okay, control K U. Nope. Control K U. There we go. Strange. All right, <clears throat> control S. So what this does is it creates a function called capitalize, like it asked, and it's gonna, it's gonna create a parameter input string. And then what I did was, here's the example where I didn't iterate and I created new variables inside of the function. So we have a variable called all lowercase, and it's gonna take <coughs> the value of input string. And then uh, if you remember, uh, from the readings, excuse me, the dot two lowercase is a a embedded function in JavaScript that will take input anything in input string and convert it all to lowercase. Since we don't have any arguments to pass into lowercase, it's going to go ahead and uh, apply that to input string. So the next line is we're creating a new variable called first letter cap, and that's taking on this. This, the lowercase, all lowercase, like I try to make it verbose so it makes sense. The variable all lowercase, so after this is completed, and then it's going to do dot char at space uh, uh, at zero character, which means the it's going to take the first character, because that's zero if you remember from arrays. Um, <coughs> the zero position is the first character, so we're going to convert that to uppercase, which is the exact same concept is two lowercase and then we're going to concatenate it with originally I didn't have this but you had to add this because if you don't add this dot to concatenation of all lowercase dot slice one you'll lose anything that's outside of the first letter so in the example this is a foobar statement it will only pass through the T and this will all be omitted because <clears throat> when you do uh, <clears throat> when you do the at the char at uh, call it 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 basically slices it into an array so to speak I don't know if that's exactly true but think of it kind of like an array because we're telling it position zero so we have to tell it to add back in slice one is I actually had to google that um, actually I got the whole code off of uh, a google search here um, so here's the it in play with I won't confuse you because they're using different variables but same concept, but what it does is that slice one, <clears throat> what it does is I Google that, and then it says right here, slice extracts the text from one string and returns it to a new. Changes to the text in one string does not affect the other string. You have to extract the third character through the second to last character. So basically what that means is we have to add this back in at one, starting at slicing it at one, since we started here at position zero, we need to start here at position one, and add all this, slice this back into the uh, variable first letter cap. Otherwise, none of this will exist. It will literally just erase it like it didn't exist. So you return, then it returns first letter cap. So that processes and returns it and cancels it out. So if we run this, it should say this is a foobar statement with ca the T capitalized and everything else is in, sh is in um, uh, lowercase. So... There you go. This is a foobar statement. Perfect. Hope that made sense. 
trying my best. That was, that was a lot going on there as far as us just getting used to functions. So hope that made sense there. Control K C. Nope. Control K C. Okay. All right. Cool. Next one and last one is write a function called last letter that takes a string and returns the very last letter of that string. And then it says example. This is where I was hoping that the other ones would <coughs> give a little hint, but they didn't. Uh, last letter A, B, C, D in quotes should return quote D only. Um, so as it sounds, let's go ahead and get this uncommented. Control K U. There we go. Is this weird? Sometimes it does it in the first time. Control S to save. Okay, so we have a function call uh, creation for last letter and it's input string again, just like use the same um, I use the same acronym. I use the same variable name as, as the other one just for ease. Uh, input string is the parameter and it's going to return. This time I put it all in one line. Um, you can do this too for clarity, otherwise you can do what I did up here and put the return line on its own uh, line uh, and then you have to put you know return input string um, and, but I but I seen I could do this from I learned this from the uh, googling from this guy here I figured you know let's just put it on the same line make it easy um, and then um, okay so we're gonna have ourselves there so return so input dot string is our variable so and we're gonna do dot slice negative one so kinda like up here with the with the dot slice one I had to google negative one I had to google this I knew I was gonna have to use slice but I didn't know uh, how to do how to use it what position value to get that last string uh, oops. Um, or that last character so what I did was I googled it Google's your best friend took me to stack overflow um, I just googled how to get last character of a string and it came up with this str string dot slice negative one and it says right here basically uh, the negative start index slices a string from index to length and becomes index negative one which is the last character that's extracted and they give an example here which is gonna uh, exhibit C uh, the uh, letter C so that's how you do that so that's what I put here so return it's going to return that slice so that it's going to slice it up and return that very whatever the very last string is it doesn't even matter how long it is we'll see in a second so and it's going to um, cancel out to the log and so it should uh, so we're going to call last letter and we're going to input the argument of a b c d there it is d and just to make sure it works correctly you can put any number of letters in fact even a number in here I think let's just stress test it it should it sh this should control us to save this should just output six and look it does cool so JavaScript super flexible in that I couldn't do that in in uh, you know other languages necessarily that easily so it literally will just set that out as a string um, so yeah we could also take away now it should just do C and just to see make sure you hit control s to save it i'm i'm doing that in the background without always saying it but otherwise it won't run the latest code so um in the browser but anyway that is all four of those exercises explained and done um knowledge check and next lesson so 71 percent complete and next time we'll be going into problem solving haven't looked at it don't know how much is involved with that or what that means we will find out together so with that said guys I uh, hope you enjoyed today's content and coming along with the journey with me today I hope you learned something had a little fun along the way please like share and subscribe for more content and um, let me know in the comments how you fared out on this exercise and uh, any other questions that you may have for me or suggestions um, and so with that said until next time see ya